Hey guys, tonight I'm assembling minis for Nokus Fest, and since I'm writing a post on putting together ash cans, I thought a video segment might be useful for you guys. So right now I'm folding Artistically Challenged, which is my 2014-2015 sketchbook. Um, I went to Office Max this evening and got it printed. It's um, double-sided printing, and I'll go over how to do that in the post itself. But um, like I said, right now I'm just kind of folding them, and I was fortunate that Office Max collated them for me. Um, Office Max doesn't always do that, so it was nice that it was done this time because it makes it a lot easier for me. So what I'm doing is, since this is a, a thicker ash can, and an ash can is just like, um, it's, it's, it's like a mini comic or a collection of sketches or just anything that you threw together. Um, it's not meant to be very clean and tidy. It's not meant to have like a lot of explanation. It's just meant to be like a quick little thing. Um, so I'm folding these ash cans right now, and this is a bone folder. It's a Martha, Martha Stewart bone folder, but you can also use um, the blunt end of a butter knife if you have a nice heavy butter knife. Uh, I've done that before, it works just as well. Um, and I'm separating my ash can in two halves since it's a thicker one and folding them separately and then putting them together and I'll be stapling them in a minute. Uh, some of the things that you can put in your ash can are, um, like for example, this is a collection of sketches. So it's got stuff organized by month, some of it is explained, like my style test, it, um, I have the original artist who I'm mimicking uh, listed underneath. And um, I'm a little bit disappointed in the print job this time, to be honest, because they didn't um, do super black. So my dark blacks are actually very gray. <laughs> so that's pretty disappointing, to be honest. The, the machine that collates doesn't do super black. So um, that might be something to ask about. But of course, finding an Office Max that has employees who, who know what you're talking about can be difficult. The first employee I encountered didn't know how to do double-sided printing, but at least she was willing to wait until her associate came to help me out. So it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. I was starting to sweat bullets though, because I could just see my evening going down the tubes and paying for a bunch of stuff I just couldn't use. But fortunately, that, that didn't happen. So I'm going to fold all of my mini comics, and then I'm going to staple them all with a long arm stapler. And I'm gonna go over that in a few minutes with you guys as well. And as I'm folding them, I'm just setting them aside um, so they're not in the way. All right, so here is my stack of Artistically Challenged. And this is a long arm stapler. And what makes this special is usually staplers are about what? This long, right? About five and a half inches. This is over 12 inches long. And that means that when I'm stapling a book that's 11 inches wide, I can do so easily without having to take things apart. So I've already got my the little plastic catch set at five and a half, which is half of what my mini comic is. And uh, you just want to slip two staples into your crease, like so. And you might have to adjust it a little bit, because um, sometimes they can get a little bit off. Like um, my setting is a little, even though it's at five and a half, I need to make it like five and a half, half. So, that's your stapled and assembled mini comic. Um, I recommend you, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm flipping it around a lot. I recommend you make sure you have your name on it and that you have contact information on the back because for some, some people at a show will only, they're only gonna purchase this, then they might not take your card. Um, so you want them to be able to find you if they like it. And what I do once I've completed the whole stack is I rubber band them together so that the pressure will continue to um, flatten my book out for me over time. So uh, I'm gonna finish the rest of the stack and then I'll show you the other two ash cans I've put together. So here we have a stack of um, freshly printed and stapled pretty much done. 
ash cans, sketchbook ash cans specifically. Um, and I usually like to use a couple of the bigger rubber bands than this, but I'm running low on rubber bands, so I'm just going to use one. And when stacking these for travel or storage, you want to have them alternating, so back covers together, I guess, back to back. Does that, if, if that makes sense? Um, and that way you can get them into a smaller space and they will eventually be flatter than if you stored them the other way. And what I like to do is as soon as my Office Depot boxes are empty, I like to put my finished minis in the Office Depot box and label it with what's inside so when I fly or when I drive, I know what is what. And I also put how many copies are in the box. So, what else can you make into an ash can? Well, you can turn your comics into an ash can. Unfortunately for me, I don't have any of those to show you since most of the comics I'm doing these days are going right into anthologies and I can't release them for a year or they're going right into the next volume of Seven Inch Kara and I can't release it until the book's done. So I don't have any mini comics, but that doesn't mean I don't have any minis at all. And I'm gonna, this is kind of a, a big stack. I might have to separate this, but not right this second. So, you guys are some of the first to see my new ash can, Favorite Fictional Femmes. I've been working on it through Inktober and a little bit of November. And it is, I wanna say, um, 42 fictional girls and women who inspired my work in some way. And they range from anime to stuff shown on Cartoon Network to um, like children and classic literature. And I'm gonna have this next weekend, which is probably past. I'm gonna have this at Noka's Fest for sale. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, there are a couple of years where I didn't have any minis um, I was just focusing a lot on like anime con stuff, which I really regretted to be honest. So these have a cardstock cover and it's single sided printed on the cover, but it's double sided inside the book. And what I like to do for books that have heavier covers is I like to fold the cover and the book separately. And I think it just has a cleaner look. It was kind of a rush putting this one together because I was inking girls as I was laying out the book and writing the introduction and trying to get everything done in time. Okay, and then I just slip it into the cover and I will staple it. So I'm going to do the rest of these books and staple them and I'm gonna check back in with you guys because I wanna show you something neat that makes your minis look a little bit more special. Um, and something you can do that I'm not, I'm not going to do because I'd have to charge more and I don't necessarily think people would pay more is you can if you have a nice paper trimmer, mine's getting kind of wrecked, uh, you can trim this white section that peeks out so that your book looks nice and flush. But that takes time and you need a sharp paper sharpener and um, it, it may not be worth it if you're just charging like two or three dollars, which is probably, I'm probably gonna be charging three for this. So it's not necessarily worth it. So one of the things you can do to make your minis a little more special, and it's a really simple thing, is you can just buy color coordinated staples that match your cover. It looks really cute and it looks, it's like just a little bit more extra care. So I'm gonna work my way through this stack of fictional films and I'll get back to you guys in a little bit. 
So another kind of um, ash can you can put together is one that con that is made up of a monthly challenge, like Magical Girl March, which is 31 days, 30 magical girls, two magical boys. Um, and with this sort, it's nice to have a calendar. It's a cute touch. Uh, you include your day, you include the theme, and then maybe you put your a description of the character or what inspired you. All right, so now that my minis are assembled, it's time to spice them up a little bit. Um, for Magic Girl March, I have this really cute, um, like, doily corner docker that I'm going to use. Ugh. See, isn't that really cute? And I'm just going to do the two outer corners on every book, so that'll only take forever. Um, but... I'm going to spare you guys that, and I'm going to do an example of favorite fictional femmes, and I have a round corner docker that I'm going to use for this. So I'm going to do all my books, um, and then I'll get back to you guys with some other cute things you can do to make your mini stand out a little bit more. Okay, so I've just docked a bunch of corners, and my hand is a little bit torn up from the corner dockers. Um, so something I usually like to do is put some cute stickers on my covers, but I'm out of cute stickers at the moment. So I'm going to be using glittery pins, uh, at use Spica pins, and um, Zig Wink of Stella pins, because they add just... Let's see if I can dig up some others because I think my clear might be running out and I have a refill for it somewhere or I have another clear somewhere oh no I have two silvers well then I'm going to be using silver and maybe a little bit of black instead of clear maybe just a little bit of clear we'll see uh, to make the covers stand out even more this is kind of like the uh, Martha Stewart segment of assembling mini comics and it's totally optional. If you don't think decorating your covers will do anything for you, then don't decorate your covers. But if you think it might help people notice them a little bit better, or if you just think it would be fun, then do it. It probably will not... <laughs> it probably won't help my sales all that much, one way or the other. But I like, I think... It makes them stand out a little bit better. So I'm putting clear sparkle Wink of Stella glitter on the big Shoujo twinkles on my Magical Girl March cover. And I try to do every cover a little bit different. So they all feel kind of special. One of a kind. People really like... Um, the whole notion of handmade, even if they're not really willing to pay, like, the price that handmade is worth. I, in fact, I was talking to my significant other earlier, and um, I was talking about how much effort actually goes into making mini comics, and how um, it would honestly be easier if I just did, like, a bunch of fan art prints. Uh, because I wouldn't have to, I, like, the amount of time I spend doing the interiors of these, I could do, like, four big fan art prints with a big background and, um, take them down to get printed and then just be done with them until the show, and they'd probably sell better than original stuff sells. But, um, you know, I don't really want to go that route. I think of myself as a comic artist, so I need to do stuff that reflects, or I feel like I should do things that reflects that. And uh, I also generate just a lot of art in general, so I want to do things that kind of celebrate that work. So you guys have kind of seen how I'm going to be decorating the Magical Girl March covers. So as soon as I finish this one, I will move on to decorating favorite fictional femmes. 
And while I'm in my hometown, I might actually pick up some cute stickers, like just like stars or hearts from the dollar store just to make them a little more noticeable. So I think I'm going to go with silver. And hopefully silver is not too opaque now. It's not that opaque. These, the Wink of Stella pins seem like they would actually be a lot of fun to use for calligraphy. I might need to do something cute with that. And I'm going to fill in the little spotlights on Femmes is silver. I know artists who, like, really go to a lot of effort to make their mini comic covers look fantastic um, to the point where they aren't even really charging enough to compensate themselves for their time. There, that looks pretty snazzy there. I might have to get like some silver stars. Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. I guess I could draw them in, but that might look sloppy. The whole intention of decorating your cover is so that it doesn't look like something that was mass produced. So it has like that hand of the artist, even though you did take it somewhere to get printed. So um, that was how I assemble and decorate my mini comics. I hope you guys found that useful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me, comment on my blog, or leave a comment below. Um, and for more, inf even more information about assembling minis, please check out natasoup.blogspot.com. Have a good evening, guys. Bye.